Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of Gunman. So this video here I'll be taking you guys through the prep, masking and paintwork on this silver C250 Mercedes wagon. The name of the color is Iridium and the paint code is 775. So as usual we'll be getting straight into it and getting the panels cleaned down so that we can do our prep work. So I'm just using a mixture of 50-50 methylated spirits and water. It's a good uh, cleaning mixture to clean your panels down. Um, if there was any silicon or solvent based contaminants like road grime, tar, something like that. If the car was like from a dealership or something and it had um, a silicon based tire cleaner all over it, then I may opt to use a bit of wax and grease remover or Prepsol. Next up, I'm going around and taping up the surrounds of the panels so that I don't damage them when I'm doing my prep work. Um, yeah, always a good idea to do that because especially on a car like this, you wouldn't want to go and uh, have orbital sanding scratch marks over all your trims now, would you? Um, once that's done, we'll start blocking the repairs down. So the primer stage has obviously already been done in this video. Um, I've included that in, um, yeah quite a few videos though, so no apologies for skipping out that stage. Um, and I didn't even prime this job up. Most of the time in a body shop like this, you've got an apprentice. In this case, it's Moses, who a lot of you guys will be pretty familiar with from some of my other videos when we did a bit of a training session with Moses. So he does the prime work. We'll come in the next day, block them down, sand and paint them. Um, so yeah, just giving it a block down with 320 grit for this job. I was quite happy with the repair. I had a quick look over it, ran my hand over it, and uh, I was pretty happy that it was nice and straight. The panel editor did quite a good job on the lines and all that. So there was no need for me to go and block into it with 180 grit, which is what I do on a lot of jobs, depending on the quality of the repair. And I say that in some of my other videos, it's gonna depend what I block it with as to how happy I am with the repair. Um, like when I was doing restoration work in my own shop, you know, I'd block everything down with 180 grit and a lot of the time we'd have to pick up a spot. When you're doing full cars and they're, you know, 30, 40 years worth of damage, you'll go around, do all your repairs, but you might only get, say, 70, 80% of them or even get those repairs to 70, 80% correct. Prime it, seal it down, it gives you a good surface to work with. You then go and uh, do a few more finalizing touches and then spot prime what you need to and then uh, go on to your paintwork stage. But yeah, most of the time I don't need to re-prime. And if I do, it's just like a spot here and there these days. So it's pretty good. Work with some pretty good panel beaters. So it's all good. Um, so yeah, obviously uh, once I had the block work done, I just went over it with the orbital sander with some 400 grit. Because I blocked it down with 320, I just went straight to 400 grit. No use in going 320 block, then 320 orbital sander. Not really gonna gain a lot by doing that and then um, going over those prime edges with a piece of 500 grit one of those soft back sanding sponges very handy to have around the workshop however if you're doing a job like this at home it, you may not be able to justify the extra cost i think a box of them costs around 90 dollars and if you're only painting a couple of jobs every year then standard sandpaper is definitely going to do the job fine for you so uh yeah just going over every single one of those primer edges it's uh one of the pretty ugly thing to go and paint over big thick primer edges. Especially on a silver, you've got to get your prep work on point with silvers. Especially when you're using water based, which I'm not, I'm using solvent based paint here. So I've found that you can go like that extra grit coarser with uh, solvent based paint uh, compared to water based. Um, so for instance, I'm, I'm prepping these blends up here with 600 grit, which does sound a little bit coarse. Yeah, pretty like that's hardcore mode, um, but it works. I've done it for years and it absolutely works. I find I go through a little bit less uh, sandpaper using the coarser, coarser grit. It gets it done a little bit quicker too. Um, so you're not getting a section this big done, ripping the 800 off. Um, but as I say, if I was using water bond paints, I would be using 800 grit. Um, for the orbital sander and then when I'm doing my edges I would use 1000 grit rather than 800 grit which is what you'll see me using in this video. Grey Scotch Bright also works quite fine but um, yeah as you'll see later on I'm, I'm gonna go over all those edges with a piece of 800 grit. I just like how it because um, it's actual sandpaper uh, Scotch Bright will actually sort of follow 
uh, if you go like look at your orange peel or the the finish in your paint, it will have a little bit of a uh, rip ripply finish to it. I guess like the peel of an orange. Um, so the 800 grit, the sandpaper will actually knock that out and allow you to start from a, a fresh uh, fresh beginning. I guess. Whereas Scotch Bright will sort of follow follow those contours. Um, so yeah, big thick edges like around that uh, fuel flap and that spend a little bit extra time so when, when you are painting and this it's not that this was even done it wasn't terribly big thick edge but um when you're painting something the paint naturally wants to sort of start to pull up around the edges so if you, you do ever get that on back edges of doors front edges of doors um it's a good idea to sand that out when possible obviously being extremely careful especially on areas like this up the front edge of the door this is just my clear coat's only going to be going over there i'm, I'm not going to be putting any color there um, that's a blend area, so you don't want to go and cut through that clear coat into your base coat. If it's up the back edge of the door in this case, wouldn't be an issue because I'm going to be putting color there anyway. I need to color it to color over my primer. Um, so yeah, uh, finally, once I've done my blend areas, I'll then go over the primed area with a piece of 600 as well. Uh, in between each stage, it's always good practice to use your high pressure air blower and blow the panels off to make sure that you can uh, yeah, inspect your panels and make sure you haven't missed anything. Uh, it may look good with all the dust all over there, you then get it off and you're like, oh, I missed a spot there, so get the orbital sander back out and uh, yeah, buzz it down, need be. Uh, next up, it's always a good idea to check for stone chips and scratches and stuff like that. In this case, it's not going to ruin my blend. Had that stone chip there on the middle of that rear door been an extra two inches further forward, I probably wouldn't have filled it up. Uh, I would have just done a little bit of a touch with some silver paint and cleared over it because it would have got to the point where you're possibly gonna ruin your blend. You're gonna be putting color all the way up the door and then there's, uh, yeah, open the door for a possible uh, mismatch of color when you get the uh, car outside. Silvers can be a little bit tricky to blend, and as I say, your prep work does have to be on point. So I would probably recommend, like, I do these methods and I know they work for me. Uh, I would probably recommend most people don't use the 800 grit, use a 1000 grit or just grey scotch bright, and use 800 grit when you are uh, doing your orbital sanding instead of the 600 grit I used. Um, so yeah, once I did all the edges, the uh, fine filler had dried. So a good method to remove your fine filler on chips and scratches like that is just get your razor blade, shave it off. Um, it's going to make it so like, if you if you were to like just get an orbital sander or even try doing it by hand and buzz that uh, fine filler out, what you're doing is you're sanding either side of this, uh, the filler and then you possibly be left with a bit of a high spot where the filler was. Um, so that will actually just shave just the filler down Again, blowing off and inspecting between each stage. And that's about it for the prep work. And we're gonna get in the booth and do our masking stage. So yeah, quick look at the color first. Uh, it turns out the color was pretty good. It needed a touch of blue in it though. Um, Standox is pretty good with their colors with the Spectro photo meter. So I'll just take three photos of the car, plug that up to my computer and um, yeah, that'll search the database, make a few adjustments need be, which is Pretty handy um, it might add a little bit of silver out because it's got the photo that you've taken it might adjust that color yeah as it sees fit and I'd give it say 80 85 percent success rate you know and one of those things you got to learn your system like I'll, I'll look at colors sometimes and I'll be like I'm gonna swap that black out I, I know that 571 is a problem tinter which is the standox base coat black I swapped that out for 854 and it works for me. Um, another thing is you're better off having a color a bit bland, a bit colorless than too colorful. So you might just look at a color and say, hey, I'll leave a bit of that blue out. I can always drop a touch back in, but once you've got that blue in there, it's gonna take a lot and a lot of color to flood that out. So that's exactly what happened in this, uh, when I was doing the color matching on this uh, job here, it turned out, yep, leave a bit of the blue out. Well, I probably didn't need to leave it out, but it was easy to put back in. 
um, not to worry. We're onto the masking stage now. So obviously you notice that I was giving the edges a bit of a wipe down uh, to make sure that I'm not painting or masking over dust, dusty edges. Um, you can use wax and grease remover and wipe the entire panels down, including all your edges before your masking stage. However, I've found it's not really necessary. I've done both ways. I've done wiping and not wiping with wax and grease remover prior to paintwork or prior to masking, sorry. I always do it prior to paintwork um, and found it doesn't make a great deal of a difference to the cleanliness of the job, to the amount of uh, contamination on the job and it's just putting an extra stage in there. So I find it's not really necessary. Um, and that's my famous uh, false edge masking trick. Uh, use it daily, rare rare that a day goes by at work that I don't use it. Um, and then you just using a couple of, what are they? Not three quarter inch, that's the small stuff. It's about 36 mil tape, a couple of rows of that down the door jam. You could also use some of the foam tape, but I find it's pretty unreliable. Um, always like to make sure with a bit of couple of rows of masking tape. And on the inside of that door jam there, on the inside of the door itself, I'm just masking right up along that seam seal line. So you've got a bit of an edge in there anyway. You could also use the false edge masking in there. However, I've found most of the time it's not so important. You're not going to be slamming two big heavy coats of clear in there anyway. It's just going to be the tiniest little bit of overspray. Worst case scenario, get yourself a bit of polish and uh, polish it off, but the masking edge itself is going to be on the sealer line anyway. And um, yeah, for the rest of the door opening, so around the tops of the door jams, uh, the windscreen pillar, A pillar, um, I'm just going to be back masking it. As you can see, I already did it at the start. I just back masked that, peeled it back a bit, and it is a sound method, it does work, but it's something you just got to be careful when you're actually applying the paint that you don't just slam that paint right into your masking and then build that up too much. Uh, I, I decided to include a bit of footage of that in this video specifically because someone left a comment the other day saying, um, I always false edge mask every edge. Uh, like, so he would have false edge mask all the way up the top here. He would have false edge masked the front edge of his rear door you will probably notice that I didn't do that. I just back masked it. So I just put the tape there and peeled it back. Um, it does work if you're careful, you know, um, have it just peeled back a little bit off the edge. Um, don't overload the paint on the inside. And as you'll see at the very end of this video, there's no edge there. It, it won't even need to be hand polished or anything like that. Uh, so once all your edge masking is done, I'll just get one of my Colad blades and slice it out and tape it down. I'll let you guys just uh, watch me while we finish the masking off. I think I've said about all I can about the masking and we'll uh, continue on when we get into the paintwork stage. But I won't be putting any music on because most of the feedback on me putting music on is, well, if we want to listen to music, we can listen to whatever we want ourselves. So go and wax some Pantera on in the background while you're watching me do the rest of this masking and we'll continue on when uh, I'm ready to start splashing some paint around.
So obviously got the masking stage all done and we're ready to give it a wax and grease remover or prep sole. So wipe uh, just spraying with this atomizer bottle over the entire panel and uh, using one of those blue lint free cloths to uh, wipe it off, not um, wipe it nice and dry and clean. Uh, so yeah, these are pretty good handy cloths and their Sontara is the brand. So DuPont Sontara is what they always used to be called, but I think they just dropped the DuPont name because I think DuPont refinishing is being sold off to Axelta. So along with all of their stuff. Uh, it's just like the Triple S that you'll see me using in a few minutes. That always used to be called DuPont Triple S, but it's all good, it's all the same stuff. So yeah, when I am wiping uh, my prep sole off, I always do my blend areas first because I've done the dry sanding stage and I've said it in many videos already, um, but always wipe your blends first because if you go and wipe over that primer, you will then fill that rag up with some primer dust because you've done your dry sanding. You then go and wipe over your blend area after. That primer dust will stay in the rag. You'll then wipe that over your blend area and possibly ruin your blend. Trust me, I've done it a couple of times. First few times, I didn't even know what it was. I was like, what the hell is this under there? Uh, I just started doing the dry sanding and I had to figure it out myself that I was getting contamination from my own primer dust. So as long as you are cautious of that and uh, aware that it can happen, you're pretty right, you know. And even when doing your prep work stage, as I, I think I said it earlier in the video itself, um, always when I'm doing my blends, make sure that that uh, orbital sander is nice and clean, sandpaper is nice and clean and uh, do your blends first and then go over your primed areas last. So yeah, uh, once it's all prep sold, I'll wipe the entire job down with a tack cloth. I actually got these in for a bit of a demo. Um, they're Colad tack cloths. So I've been enjoying them. They're, they're pretty good. They start off quite stiff and they get, come in like a big, big sheet. Um, but I've got like a big box of, or a big bag of like 12 or something of them and you're ripping them in half and been getting pretty clean jobs with them. Another thing I've been doing lately that I didn't include in uh, the footage, uh, I did it off cam, but um, I've been tack ragging my plastic, my masking plastic around the area that I'm painting. I don't go and do the entire car, but just sort of like the meter around where you're, you're painting, just tack rag it off because sometimes there can be a little bit of dust on it. Um, but yeah, Chromax Trip 2S is what I'm using now. It's a pretty awesome product. It's like a transparent sealer slash blending aid slash adhesion promoter. So it does, it's like a three in one style product and uh, really been enjoying using it again. Hadn't used it for years until I saw it in the corner and the other painter is just like, hey, what is that stuff there? And I'm like, oh, I forgot about that. That's awesome. And yeah, we use it on just about everything these days. Totally love it. Um, so yeah, base coat stage using the Segola 4600 Extreme. Still been using that. It's been my base coat gun just about ever since I got it late last year. Really enjoying using it. Get some nice amount of material out. And yeah, that's just a 1.3 with the Aqua air cap on it. Um, pressure, that's uh, around 1.5 bar, 1.5 to 1.7. Sometimes I need to turn it up a little bit. Uh, depending on the job and how the metallics are laying down. But um, yeah, I just sort of adjust as required, as I say. Um, you know, you might have a paint rep come in and tell you, you've got to paint everything with two bar. you got to, or 29 PSI. That's how you got to paint. You get in there and you find oversprays going all over your blends and it's just not working. And the metallics aren't laying down properly. You're getting mottle and all that. Lower the pressure a bit. Hell, you may even need to raise the pressure a bit. Play around with it, find what works for you, and uh, yeah, just keep going with that. Um, but yeah, just take note of what I'm doing with the blend. Blends, especially on silvers, can be a bit of a, a tricky task. And I found one of the most important things is actually getting the color right. You know, um, if you've got yourself a 99% color match, you can probably do yourself a pretty average blend, but the color is so good, it's just going to look good in the, it's just going to blend out well. You go and get yourself sort of 75 and below color match, you're gonna struggle blending it because no matter how good you are, you're not gonna blend black into white, are you? Um, so yeah, color matching stage, very important. And yeah, from what I hear, it's, it's a skill that not everybody has around the world in this industry. Um, as I've said in other videos, you wouldn't last 
a week in a body shop in Australia if you couldn't colour match. Maybe people over here are a bit more fussy with their cars, but yeah, it's not that uncommon to have cars come back for average colour matches and we actually did a job for another panel shop. Like, And look, to me, the job actually didn't look that bad. It was just a fussy customer, to be honest. Um, but yeah, like this other body shop, there's a few other things that I could have picked on the job. So maybe it was like a, a bit of a everything and the color, you know, um, but yeah, the color was, I'd, I'd give it like 85, 90% on a black, it's, you know, a, a color that you're really not going to notice the difference unless you're really looking for it. But it came to our workshop after they did it three times and yeah, we ended up doing it and it, it looked pretty good. Um, but anyway, continuing on with the job, just using the Standox standard clear on this one. It's our top clear. I'll use this on the nice jobs, uh, average everyday job. Just use the Duke Zone Plus 2K clear, and I like that stuff too. Um, I've been warming my clear up, whacking in the microwave for 30 seconds. Um, obviously, just being careful the microwave you're using. Don't go and put it in the microwave that everyone's eating their food out of, or you might get in a bit of trouble. Um, but get yourself a cheap microwave from, you know, Gumtree or whatever, Craigslist if you're in America, and um, good to have in the workshop, very handy and quick, like back in the day I used to um, heat my clear up with, by putting it into a hot bucket of water, but it takes time, you've got to boil the water, get the buckets, and it's a bit messy, you just mix it clear up these days, whack it in the microwave, give it 20 seconds for 500 mils of clear, I've got myself a little thermometer, digital thermometer gauge, make sure it's up to 30 degrees, off you go. Flash off times are improved. Um, I'm sort of doing the tack and whack method with this. I did give it maybe like 30 seconds in between coats. Um, close enough to tack and whack, I guess. Um, yeah, GTI Pro Light, the purple nebula. Beautiful looking gun. Absolutely love it. Um, it's, I would still happily give the Pro Light top spot if I was to redo my top 10. The Seagola 4600 would make it in there if I was to do my top 10 again. I'm not sure exactly which spot it would take out. There's some pretty fierce competition out there with spray guns. Um, but yeah, I just find you've got to strike the balance in between affordability and build quality, really. Um, most of the top guns are able to get exactly the same finishes, especially in the right hands. I guess it comes down to personal preference. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's about it for this job. So we'll uh, have a quick look over it when it's all finished off. And as I said, we'll have a quick look at those edges just so you can see that my methods are sound. Obviously use the uh, trim tape around the edge of that quarter glass there. Nothing wrong with masking stuff like that up on a car like this. Um, there's a, enough of an edge for me to pull the rubber away. If it was my car, I'd prefer not to have the glass taken out. Sometimes you get those windscreen fitters, they'll come in, they'll, they'll get finger, dirty, grubby fingerprints all over the interior trims, they'll break clips, um, they'll then not seal it up properly, um, and so on and so forth, you know. So there's that edge, it cleaned up quite nice. Um, all in all, pretty open and closed job. I was happy with how it came up, and I enjoy painting these kind of cars. That's one thing that always happens, though, on these European cars. They, they've got those rubbers around the fuel door. Always get my, uh, always get a bit of overspray on there, but because your tape just doesn't stick to the rubber. But the other good side of it is that paint doesn't stick to rubber either. So um, I never stress out. If I've noticed that the masking tape has pulled up a little bit when I'm painting, just paint it and clean it off with a bit of a thinner's rag later on. No dramas whatsoever. That's about it for this video. Thanks for hanging around to the end. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel. Share it around with your friends if you want. If you don't, whatever. It's all good. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Until then, make sure you get out there and paint some shit. This has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.
Wow.